we were discussing about anisotropic etching and in the last class we have discussed like uh, how KOH can anisotropically etch silicon. Now today we will talk about one uh, new chemical that is tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide or TMH and TMH also etches silicon anisotropically means in all the, in all the direction the etching rate is not same. Now as you understand by now that the etching rate is depends on the uh, silicon crystallinity or which direction we are etching. So changing the chemical that property does not change that means that the 100 will have like the medium kind of etching rate 100, uh, 110 will have the highest etching rate and 111 will have the lowest etching rate. But in those directions etching like the magnitude of etching rate will change definitely with different kind of chemicals. So first of all what are the advantages of using TMH? The first point is that this is very much less toxic like KOH is more toxic than TMH. Then this is highly selective to oxide and nitrite compared to KOH. That means like if we compare that how much of oxide is etched in one minute in terms of uh, KOH and TMH then in TMH the etching rate uh, like the, etch, uh, the oxide etching will be lesser. So this gives us high selectivity that means that as we know that the this oxides as we know that these oxides are actually used as masking layer right. So as we discussed earlier that if we have to etch 10 micron of silicon and uh, in that time if we uh, if we need to uh, etch let us say for 30 minutes for that and by that time if the SiO2 is etched by let us say 100 nanometer then we need at least 100 nanometer of SiO2 otherwise the masking layer will get etched off whereas for TMH this etching rate is even smaller. So we can use even lesser thickness of uh, masking layer if we use TMH etching. In the silicon for the silicon the etching rate is pretty high like comparable to KOH or even higher. And then the fourth point is the most important that is the compatible with CMOS processing. That means like whatever microelectronics or uh, sensors we use today all are based on CMOS circuitry. Then for that all the processes are not actually compatible of CMOS processes uh, with the CMOS uh, devices. But TMH does not do any kind of harm to the CMOS device or it cannot it uh, does not change the mobility of the semiconductor. So it is compatible with CMOS processing. Now here we are comparing silicon nature rate with TMH concentration right. So as you are saying that as we increase the TMH concentration then the silicon H rate decreases and it goes from uh, like at these graphs are drawn at different different temperatures. So at 70 degree centigrade the H rate is the lowest compared to the other two temperatures. So the another point what you can note from this graph that as we are increasing the temperature the H rate is getting higher and higher whereas as we are increasing the concentration H rate is getting smaller and smaller and it almost from 1.1 it goes down to goes down to about 0 0.4. So it almost decreases by about uh, 50 percent or more than that while we are increasing the TMH concentration from 5 percent to 25 percent. So this temperature and the concentration both are like control parameter for TMH aging. We can select suitable temperature and concentration and accordingly can select the H rate or can choose the H rate. Ammonium phosphate adding ammonium phosphate is uh, gives us another control on TMH etching. If we add 10 percent of ammonium phosphate in TMH etching uh, in uh, the TMH solution then we can see that the H rate actually increases right. So without, without ammonium phosphate the H rate is lesser as you can see from this graph 
for all the temperatures so it is the 70, 80 and 90 for all the temperatures H rate is lesser for the TMH uh, etching with ammon uh, without ammonium phosphate whereas as we increase as we added ammonium phosphate then we are getting higher H rate and also it gives smooth surface which is also a requirement for many of the device application because on top of that we deposit new material like uh, metal electrode or uh, some other kind of contact and it will be the contact will be better if we have a smooth surface. So adding ammonium phosphate also gives us advantage from that perspective. So now these are the important points related to TMH etching. First of all is anisotropy and here you can see that the 111 plane to 100 plane can have a selectivity of 1 is to 10 to 1 is to 35. That means that the by the time 1 nanometer of 111 plane will be etched, it 100 plane will etched by 10 nanometer to 35 nanometer and that depends like whether it will be 10 nanometer or 35 nanometer that depends on the TMH concentration, temperature, etc. parameters. But anisotropy will be always there. So the etching rate for 111 will be lesser, much lesser than the 100 plane. Next important point is selectivity and as you can see here that the selectivity to against oxide is more than 1000. So this is very important because by the time we need to we etch 1 micron of silicon only 1 nanometer of silicon dioxide will be etched with TMH. So this can protect the silicon layer whichever region we need to protect. We can use silicon dioxide layer to protect that because this has a very good selectivity against oxide. Then similar to KOH also if we dope the silicon with boron then also we have a very high selectivity like 100 is to 1. So by the time the silicon usual silicon will be etched to 100 nanometer a boron dope silicon will be etched to only 1 nanometer. So this is another way of getting different kind of patterns by doping different regions according to our required design. Final thing is aluminum passivation. So in some cases we need where uh, that after etching that etched region will be passivated or protected. So if we add some amount of silicic acid to the TMH then we can get aluminum passivation in the region where it is etched. Now if we compare KOH, EDP and TMH then we can see that KOH is simple agent simple agent and you can use it when no electronics is involved because there are uh, possibility of K plus ion actually penetrating into the silicon and changing the conductivity of the silicon semiconductor. So let us say if we are making some kind of electronic devices and there we need uh, for a particular transistor we need a specific uh, mobility of the transistor or the semiconductor. So in that case if we use KOH etching then there is a possibility that KOH uh, like the K plus ion might change the conductivity of the semiconductor layer or the silicon layer. So in those cases we should not use KOH and we need a thicker mask layer because as we are saying that KOH etches SiO2 also very aggressively not as aggressive as silicon but compared to TMH it has much higher etching rate. So we need a thicker masking layer and for KOH also we get very good anisotropy. The next agent EDP which we have not discussed uh, in this course we should use where we have P, P plus H top because P, EDP has a very good selectivity with respect to P plus H top but the negative point is this is highly toxic whereas TMH is not toxic and this is highly compatible with CMOS and it has all the good points of KOH also and we can use it while making the uh, CMOS technologies also. Now another aspect of KOH etching is convex corners. So that we will explain now with the help of this design. So let us say this is the design we need to etch and this top white portion whatever you can see here these are the this is the design right and this is the masking layer. And ultimately we are etching this pink layer which is which let us say is silicon. 
Now as you can see that these regions are protected, so these regions will not get etched which is just below, uh, just below this white layer, this will not get etched and this all the open areas will get etched very easily. So ultimately we should see the same kind of pattern in the silicon or on this pink layer. This white region can be uh, some kind of polymer which is, is used as a masking layer or SiO2. So rounding up of these convex corners should not be there according to the design. But what happens is, see this is like uh, this corner is actually attacked from both the direction like this direction as well as this direction. As we have seen for KV etching that we get a profile like this, right, where this angle is 54 degree, uh, 54.7 degree and then this plane is 1 1 on plane, plane is 1 1 on plane. Now both of this like this face also and this face and this face also, both of these faces will have 1 1 on plane, but this 1 1 on plane will get easily attacked from this direction as well as this 1 1 1 plane uh, or the slope will get easily attacked from the this direction. So because of that this convex this corner will get etched even more easily. So this convex corner will get etched even more easily and so we will get something like this where the actual surface was something like this right it get etched. In case of concave corner the 1 1 1 planes actually the protective planes actually join or merge here. So there is no point where the material can, can actually attack from this direction because in this direction actually this 1 1 1 plane is there. So the concave corner are not etched aggressively where in compared to the convex corners. Now there are different ways to prevent this convex corner etching. The first method is that we can add 30 percent tertiary butyl, the first method is we can add 30 percent tertiary butanol solution or IPA to the 30 percent KOH solution. Okay. So this will reduce the etching rate at the convex corner and another way is that we etch, we modify the mask according to our design. So that we will discuss in the next slide like this. So technically we need a mask like this. Now as you have seen the convex corner cut because of the convex corner etching it will become like this right. Now what we can do is we can modify our design to add this extra portions here. Now adding this extra portion what we have done that now the there, is, there does not exist any convex corner there does not exist any convex corner only here is some con concave corner which will not be affected because of that and this extra region is also such that it will go under etching and it will it can get removed by the time the complete etching is done. So this dimension also we need to keep in mind so that by the time the uh, our desired depth is etched this region also should get etched. So ultimately the design after etching should come like this without any convex corner cut and this regions will also not be there because of the under etching. And for that purpose the width of the corner beam must be about twice the thickness of the square pattern. And there are actually commercially available uh, programs are there which can uh, if we uh, if we input our design then accordingly it creates or modifies the mask so that the convex corner etching will not be there. Why it should be actually twice because 
let us say the thickness of the thickness of this um, layer which we actually want to edge is about 1 micron right. So, by the time we edge it will go in the vertical direction by 1 micron. Now, in this 1 micron it will try to edge laterally also right from this direction as well as from this direction it will edge 1 micron. So, if it is uh, both the side if it is coming 1 micron then if the width is about 2 micron then only by the time it edges 1 micron vertically it will edge 2 micron horizontally. So, this complete region will get edged off and the convex corner also will not be there it will be a sharp corner. Finally, I am going to show these two patterns which are made by using anisotropic weight etching and there you see this cantilever and this is the SEM image or scanning electron microscope image of a real silicon uh, sil uh, silicon dioxide cantilever which was made by KOH etching because silicon got etched but SiO2 did not get etched. So, accordingly SiO2 uh, remains as a free standing beam and this is the hollow region you can see you can see the shadow of the cantilever at, at the bottom part of the uh, trench. And this cantilever is about uh, length is about 65 micron with this 15 micron and thickness is about 500 nanometer. So, this is this was done by KOH etching and the next example is of a of an AFM tip and AFM tip is etched by just like that this is let us say the mask and below there is silicon. Now, all the sides silicon will get etched and 111 planes will get opened up. Now, as this one because of the convex etching as this 111 planes are getting etched from the convex corner also the 4111 plane comes into the picture like 411, 411 planes get opened up and because of that see that this region if this is the mass then the middle portion will get etched at last because it will take time for the agent to come in contact with this right and the side regions will get etched fast. So, it will ultimately become like a pyramid shape because the top region will get first etched. So, the etching rate or the um, uh, most region will get etched from the top initially and then as it opens up slowly it goes down goes down and then it etches from the bottom also and by the time it, it reaches our desired depth the top portion has almost reached the central point. So, you get a sharp tip uh, which is used for atomic force microscopy. So, these two uh, both the uh, both of these structures were made in since IIC Bangalore by Professor Kenmart and with this we will stop uh, for this class and next time we will discuss on lithography.